Welcome to this Early Childhood Voices Conference presentation. This presentation is on participation in community activities for children with complex communication needs. We would first like to acknowledge the Wiradjuri people of Australia, who are the traditional owners of the land on which I live, play and work. I pay respect to their elders past, present and emerging. The World Health Organization defines participation as involvement in life situations. When we look at this in relation to children's experience, it can be described in terms of intensity, which refers to the frequency or amount of time they participate, diversity in relation to the number of different activities that they partake in, their enjoyment in these activities, with whom they participate with and where they participate. For children, they participate in three main environments, home, school and community. Within the community, participation patterns can be further categorised into informal or formal. So informal activities are those that are spontaneous in nature versus our formal activities are those organised by a teacher, a leader, a coach. And they normally involve specific rules or goals and prior planning because of transportation and fitting in with scheduled times. Some examples of these participation are on the slide here. And this literature review and presentation will focus on this, formal community activities for children. First, let's look at the benefits of community participation. So participation in organised community activities is a basic human right in relation to the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities and also the rights of children. But it is also vital for children's sense of belonging which relates directly to the early years framework. And they also have developmental benefits in relation to children's physical, cognitive and communication skills, as well as their independence and creativity. It is also through this participation that they expand their social networks and develop relationships and peer friendships, which in turn support social and emotional growth. Through participation, children improve their mental health, they develop a positive self-concept and increase their quality of life. And this community participation in activities has also been linked to reduced levels of stress and frustration. So this presentation aims to describe the knowledge base regarding participation and experiences in community activities for children with and without disabilities. And we will also be looking specifically at children with complex communication needs. We will present findings from a scoping literature review where literature was sourced through academic databases and included peer reviewed and grey literature. So first let's define complex communication needs. So complex communication needs is defined as difficulty communicating using speech alone. So children with complex communication needs rely on other forms of communication to meet their daily communication needs. These include communication aids to help them share their ideas and engage in society. Communication aids include keyword sign, communication books, or speech output devices, which you can see on the slides there. So now let's look at the experience in community activities. First, we will explore this for children without a disability. So it is estimated that over half of the activities children participate in are community-based rather than our home or school environments. And this is indicative of a high frequency of those formal activities. A study of American children found that they partake in an average of 5.6 hours of extracurricular activities a week. So when we start to look at some of the patterns in relation to that participation, a child's strong sense of activity preference resulted in higher participation in that activity. So that's linked, if I have a high interest in that activity, I'm more likely to participate in that activity. In relation to some general age trends, typically developing children's enjoyment and diversity gradually reduce as they grow, while intensity scores increase up until the age of 12. 
So this is tr indicating that for children, they generally start with a broad range of activities. And as they work out potentially which ones suit their lifestyle or which ones they enjoy more, they tend to reduce that range and focus more intensely on those activities. In relation to our gender trends, we find that boys participate more frequently in physical-based activities, whereas girls tend to favour more of those skill-based activities or those informal activities. The researcher in this area also has looked at the factors influencing participation. And for our typically developing children, these fall under the family factors. So time and demands of the family were crucial determinants in children's level of participation. So more specifically, parents who reported a lack of time or difficulty managing those family responsibilities had children who were participated less in community activities. Extending on this, Anabai and Hardy also report that family income directly impacted that children's participation, particularly in relation to those formal activities that quite often have that cost associated with them. So now let's look at children with a disability. So disability in the research is an umbrella term that includes a range of impairments and diagnoses that relate to physical, mental, intellectual or sensory difficulties. So within this literature, the universal conclusion is that children with disabilities experience significantly reduced community participation across each of those domains we discussed. So intensity, diversity, enjoyment, with whom and where. Looking at this more specifically, children with a disability is often participating in that home environment and with their families. When they do participate with peers, it is most often with children also who have a disability rather than that broader population, including typically developing peers. When we start looking at the factors influencing that participation, we discover that there's a broad range of factors discussed in the literature. And these fall under the headings of personal factors, family factors, and environmental factors. So first we will look at those personal factors. So a child's overall development impacts participation in that the higher communication, physical, emotional, and cognitive skills they have are likely to result in more community participation. Next, we looked at behaviour. So behaviour in relation to hyperactivity or sensory aversion behaviours have been linked to reduced participation. And finally, we look at that preference. So similar to their peers without a disability, children with a disability are three times more likely to participate in activities that have a strong preference. However, we also found in the literature that children are quite often not participating in those preferred activities. They're participating in other activities that aren't of their preferred choice. Next, we have our family factors. So here, time and income is also seen as a barrier to that participation. And we also discovered that these factors are, are accentuated for these children with a disability or their parents. We also find that families' attitudes and supports is a barrier or a facilitator. So families who value that active participation in community activities are more inclined to incite that same behaviour in their children. And we also find that those families are more likely to support their child to participate. Next, we have our environmental factors. So here we find the reoccurring factor in the literature is the attitudes of others. So these include the staff, the coaches, the leaders, the peers or other community members. And attitudes sway the level of support, encouragement, expectations and understanding these children are given. We also found that many parents continue to report the limited options of community activities that will actually support their child who requires that additional support to participate in those activities. And then we find factors in relation to the activity themselves. So this might be the design, the layout, the level of resources the activity has, how accessible that activity is, and that has a big factor um, factor on whether that 
child's participation is supported or hindered in that environment. So next we're going to look at the participation experiences for children with complex communication needs. What we found here in the literature is this group of children are often excluded from the broader research papers due to their difficulty answering questions and understanding those questions. So we found only seven articles that included children with complex communication needs and they were able to be supported to answer those questions by using some of those communication aids we talked about earlier and or parental support. So these seven articles are approximately in comparison to about the 70 articles we found for children with a disability more broadly. So preliminary evidence suggests that like their peers with a disability, children with complex communication needs experience a broad range of barriers to participation, which results in significantly reduced community participation as well. So the few opportunities they do have for that community participation and social engagement are usually confined to only adults. So this might be other family members, parents or other professionals that they work with. And here we find that they don't even participate with other peers with a disability like children with a disability do. And when they do participate, they often take the form of passive or spectator roles. So for example, actually just watching their other siblings participate in those community activities. When we look at the factors influencing their participation, it is hypothesized and a kind of assumed in the literature that children with complex communication needs experience the same barriers to that community participation as children with disabilities more broadly. But we also found some specific barriers in the literature that report directly to their communication needs. So as mentioned earlier, the communication skills were a key predictor of greater participation in community activities for those children with a disabilities more broadly. So this becomes a really important factor for our children with complex communication needs, as we find that they're already behind in that area because of the nature of their diagnosis. And we also found specifically in relation to this that a child's speech intelligibility, so how easy they are to understand and how they go pronouncing sounds, positively impacts that participation in relation to intensity. So children with complex communication needs also require extended time to participate in those conversational terms. And as such, they benefit from communication partners with patients and those who are familiar with their communication strategies. They also found in the literature that often these children interact with those unreceptive communication partners. So children with communication needs also have difficulty getting access to those communication aids, particularly ones that match their communication needs and actually match the environment that they're needing to participate in. So for example, swimming was really hard to find an aid that they were actually able to continue to access in that environment. But what was really nice in this literature was that children with complex communication needs really enjoyed participating in those community activities and they had a really strong preference for activities that included that social focus, even although that that was an area that they might have found more challenging compared to their peers with a disability or their typically developing peers. So finally, let's look at our concluding remarks. Every child has the right to develop skills, that sense of belonging, friendships through those community activities. A broader, more in-depth understanding of the experiences and barriers to participation for children with complex communication needs is required. And with this broader understanding, families, community organisations and allied health professionals can work together to create inclusive community activities for all children. If you would like any more information about this topic, feel free to contact me on the details there. We are also proposing a PhD project that aims to address these gaps. If you'd like more information about that, feel free to contact me as well. Thank you.